to my channel. Hey yo, hey yo, listen up, listen up, yeah. Hey yo, hey yo, hey yo. The wireless woman. You in charge of the girls, right? I am in charge of the girls. Are you in charge of the girls? I am in charge of the girls. Okay. All right. Hey yo, hey yo, hey yo. Welcome back, Wi Fi's, to yet another underground and evidently under renovation episode of the wildest woman go ahead and do me a favor on your way in and like this video why because when you like it well i love it also if you haven't already make sure you subscribe to this channel and click the notification bell for notifications of when I go live and when I upload new content. Today, Wi-Fi, I had a revelation and I want to share it with you. Poets have said that love is stronger than pride. And I know. Under the current circumstances, it's hard to believe but I do still believe that love is stronger than pride. Love is not proud and it is not boastful. It doesn't seek its own good. And if there's anything that I've learned from loving other people, being in love, it is that humility, the type of humility that's needed in order to be able to make space and room for other people is the type of humility, the type of humbleness that resists being proud and it resists the proud. And I think that's the reason why so many people are having such a difficult time in love right now, because love will not attract pride. Love is not built on it. There won't be a firm, strong foundation in your love if it's built out of pride. And when I'm speaking of pride, I'm talking about those shallow surface level, two dimensional characteristics that people use to base their love on. And marriage taught me a lot about how to pick my battles. And sometimes you have to lose in order to win again. Sometimes you gotta lose to win again. In the words of the prophet Fantasia. And knowing how to lose gracefully, being able to count up the cost in victory is just as important as how you lose. Mostly all victors are built on failure, are built on loss. And what they did with those losses, what they did with those disappointments. A good quarterback will take a knee in a semifinal game, if it means being able to come back the next year and take their team to the championship. You know, we think that by sticking into a relationship, holding on to someone who's hurting us, that we're proving ourselves worthy of love, but that's not what love is. That's pride. That's the, the root of the competition that we feel a lot of times in these relationships comes from that. You know, learning how to pick a battle, which battles to pick, because here's the thing, you can win a battle and lose a war. Sometimes you have to go ahead and lose a battle. You have to... <laughs> Lose a battle in order to win the the long game, in order to win the war. You think about sinking the battleship, like the game battleship that some people <laughs> who are older than others may have played when they were growing up. And the way that you found the battleship was to sink the smaller ships. And a lot of us hold on to these small ships, not understanding that when we take these hits, that's how people seek out our battleship. That's how they find the things that mean the most to us. If you have someone in your life that's devaluing you, that is committing what I like to call tongue murder, and this person is enabled and embracing to continue to commit 
crimes against the relationship by the fact that there's no penalty. There's no consequences for these betrayals, you know, these these little things that erode the relationship. You think that you're sowing seeds for a peaceful future when you're sowing the seeds of dissension. Ultimately, this person is not being made better by that. You're not being made better. Your partner's not being made better. And the relationship isn't being made stronger for that type of grace. The type of grace that it takes to strengthen a relationship is grace with restraint, with boundaries, is grace that preserves the people on the ship. You know, there are times when people have to jump from a ship to save their life because the ship itself may not make it to the shore, but you may be able to swim to the shore. Whereas if you stay on that ship when it's going down, you're going to be sucked into an undertow and trapped aboard. You know, it takes grace to love not just yourself, but the other person enough to say we got a better shot at this if we leave the ship behind. And people say that to me, even in coming to where I live now and moving away from the situations that I was in, in the city that I came from, they said, you have to burn the ships. And the ships brought you there, but the ships no longer serve this new phase of your life. And that takes humility to say, I was wrong. To forgive not only your partner, but yourself. And you never get to do the full work of healing yourself and having that forgiveness for yourself as long as you're still holding on because you're still in the cycle of being injured. And even a good trainer or a good corner man, those are the ones like in Rocky that are holding that towel. Even a good trainer will throw the towel in in order to preserve the life and the career of the fighter. See, the fighter will fight again as long as they don't take a disabling career ending injury. And I don't always think that we, when we're inside of relationships, take inventory of the type of endurance that's needed to make it to the end of a thing, you know, and as much as we celebrate the triumphs and the great victories that we have in life, we also have to celebrate the times where we had enough compassion, we had enough empathy, and we had enough humility to let go. And the hard part about healing is you can't pull people into healing. You can pull people into misery because misery loves company. You can pull people into toxicity. You can pull people into debauchery. You can, it's, it's easier. It's like electrons. Everything wants to find its lowest level of energy to exist on. Everyone wants to subsist. But to actually raise your vibrational level, to come up higher, that's going to create that separation. That's going to create those boundaries, those standards. That's going to change your peer group. That's going to change your goals and aspirations. And so it's important to build a boundary now around what you have. You know, there are, there are people who live in the hood. You go in the house, there's nothing to steal. But when you go to the homes of people who are affluent, you'll notice that everything's secured. Everything has a lock on it. Everything that has a lock on it has a camera on it. Everything's insured, you know, because that's the level of protection that they have for the value they've ascribed to things. So some people think they're not healed when you're actually further along than you think you are. You just need a new security system. And that security is not being abrasive, being brazen. It's not mean. It's not rude. It is humble. And it doesn't seek its own. When you really feel safe inside of what you created, when you really feel at home 
inside the environment that you've created and then you've done the work to preserve it through your boundaries and your standards. Inside those walls, there is no pride. There's no need for it. And I think that false sense of pride that some people hide, very vulnerable, weak, things that they don't even value as much as they say they do inside of, is that pride that keeps them separated in the worst way. Because pride keeps you tied to the lowest element of yourself. The lowest, most insecure places are protected by pride. I mean, I used to think that the strength was in staying, sticking in, standing my ground. But that's where the pride is. And the pride goes before the fall. Anything that requires that level of protection, that level of pride is fragile. And the only way that we can really complete that healing journey, complete creating that space that allows us to be who we really are, because you have to understand boundaries are not borders. In order for us to be who we really are, we have to create that safety. And letting other people project their shadow images into our safe spaces is not necessarily a sign that we're unhealed, but it's a sign that we have not invested in protecting our healing with the same energy that we're constructing it. So these are a few of my thoughts on this revelation. I'm going to be starting a series on marriage where I'm going to dive a lot deeper into what it is and what it isn't and begin to give a whole lot more context because I'm working on a hypothesis. I'll share it with you when I start this series. But until that time, if you see what I see, if you feel as I feel, go ahead and drop that fire. Head phones emoji into the comments i look forward to engaging with you there but until the next episode stay unplugged unbothered so that we can be unleashed well i respect your ambition willie but you got to have vision